Now let's focus on what we don't know. When we were kids, we were encouraged to play, try, discover. We had a lot more freedom to think about the possibility of, of how to problem solve. As we get older, we have the, the curse of knowledge, which then in our experience fills in the blanks and we feel more limited. Uh, how many of you have kids that are possibly in the Odyssey of the Mind program? So I was in this program and as I was creating this talk, it dawned on me that I wrote a screenplay during my Odyssey of the Mind time and was just so inspired about it and it didn't even hit me that I didn't have experience writing a screenplay. Um, we competed and we were constantly practicing, exercising how to creatively problem solve. And what's interesting is we need to continue this way of approaching problems when it comes to work. Of course, there's the administrative and, and the core functions of what we need to do at work. But it's really important, for example, as, as product leaders to encourage curiosity. Um, resilience drills means that you think of scenarios that could be real and, and you take you work with your team to psychologically and maybe even physically prepare for them. And then provide a space, time, tools, and resources for people to explore outside of their core work functions. And so at Axway, what we've done is we've worked with our customers, for example, our innovation lab, to create creatively problem solve. So let's talk about priming the culture. Arthur C. Clarke is a fiction writer and he has three different laws and the the second one is all about how you should discover the limits of the possible by really going into the impossible. So for example, if you're a healthcare company, you could practice product and systems thinking if the population's life expectancy is 150. So currently this might break things. The other way that you can prime the culture is to give them scenarios where they can connect or hack to get ready for something that is also possibly kind of extreme. So here's an example of ways that governments and uh, the private sector is trying to <coughs> figure out how to handle quantum computing, quantum mechanics, and quantum communication. So as you might know, that's this quantum example, there's some very specific principles and, and scientific characteristics um, that make this type of technology very difficult to understand and harness, just the nature of it. So how can you help your culture take steps to get there? One of the ways that you can do that is by working with or recruiting and working with experts to explore, so in this scenario, new encryption capabilities. But a hackathon does not always have to be technical. In fact, I worked at a company where it wasn't an engineering-focused hackathon. It was a company-wide hackathon that started in about 2014 and is still going on today. Um, the next piece of innovation is consistent leadership support in action. So I'm being very intentional here. When leadership support is only in word or is not consistent, here's what happens. The speed of innovation is greatly compromised. Teams and leaders don't get the kind of influence they need. And here's what happens. You don't get the resources you need to innovate. Another characteristic of or, or result of this inconsistency, if a leader is not leading in, in um, action, is now you have a ton of great ideas that's IP that's just completely locked up in the company. And so that's an issue as competitors eventually figure it out and they implement that idea. 